Well, greetings, folk, in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus. Um, it's a tremendous thing that we're all going through, but our God is able and our God is keeping us. We want to use the time profitably by going uh, to the Word and searching scriptures uh, over certain uh, doctrines and practices. Uh, you know, we find a tremendous influence upon our lives through social media, books written by uh, Christians, other Christians, uh, messages given and preaching given, and we get quite bombarded with all the varied views and opinions of the Word, and um, as we heard from our camp, uh, God warned us about the fact that we would see uh, a major rise in deception and we need to stay very close and search the scriptures for ourselves become persuaded in our own hearts uh, that what we're hearing and what we're believing and what we're accepting into our lives is in fact the truth even the apostle paul warned us that um, there will be false prophets and false uh, preachers and false apostles and uh, there, there will be this tremendous influence of another Jesus and another gospel and another spirit. So I, I do believe that you and I have a responsibility not just to submit to brethren, which is true and it is biblical, but we also have the responsibility to test the spirits to test what we're hearing from the Word of God. And I'd like to do an exercise that enables us to embark on a certain journey. We've been talking about the foundation of Jesus Christ. And uh, what I would like to do is to continue with that and deal particularly with, our, with the principle of Hebrews chapter 6 of our baptism uh, with the Holy Ghost. And it's one subject that is very, 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 very controversial um, in many circles, but yet embraced by the early church with absolute joy. And uh, the, the actual justification for people not to, to believe it today is that that, that period has gone. Uh, we no longer need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost because we are baptized with the Holy Ghost when we are born again. And the views vary to the point of calling the speaking in tongues of the devil uh, um, to say that it's no longer applicable. And so many, many people are standing in doubt. And I believe by not understanding the fullness of the gift of the Holy Ghost, many uh, precious believers are losing out in what the Holy Ghost has actually been given for. And um, I trust that we'll be able to go through the Word and together, and this is what I'd like us to do, when we go to a scripture, I'd like you to make a note of it, to, to search it, to examine it, to see if it fits into the time where we are now, and to see whether in fact this is a true gospel. <clears throat> At the turn of the 20th century, there was major uh, revival and awakening that took place in, in England and in Wales particularly, and it was marked by a new, or let's rather say a, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And through the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, many, many, many souls were saved and there were the word was preached in truth confirmed with signs and wonders and of course um, uh, it was absolutely amazing and it was driven and the name given to the Christians in those days were they were Pentecostals because they believed in Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them to equip them for service and to be witnesses unto the Lord Jesus and gave them power 
to uh, be a witness and to preach the word. They were also people that believed that the baptism of the Holy Ghost was a separate uh, experience from salvation and it was evidenced in the speaking of tongues and there were the consequence or the result of that baptism was the fullness of the Holy Ghost which empowered believers to, to minister and to testify with power uh, by the Holy Ghost. And so that is how that revival, if you want to put it that way, began. Since then, of course, we have been persecuted. Anybody who believes in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues as evidence, is often today mocked by Christians, accused of being of the devil, accused of not being of God. And so um, we are really, if we consider ourselves to be Pentecostal, which I most certainly do, um, we are going to be um, opposed, we're going to be labelled as false teachers and false prophets and weird things are happening uh, in the church even against those who believe. So what I'd like to do is to put aside all our books, put aside all the things we've heard, put aside all the writings that we've read, put aside Google for this moment, and go back to what the Word of God says, and read it, search it, establish it in our hearts, and allow, with an open heart, the Holy Ghost to reveal the truth of God's Word, that we may be those believers that are full of the Holy Ghost. And so I pray that as we go through this exercise, we'll all be diligent. I invite you, encourage you to raise any question, question any scripture we're referring to, uh, question any um, view or any interpretation that we may be implying. But we want to get down to the Word of God as it is written. Read it, search it, expound it by the grace that God gives us. And then allow that to become a persuasion in our heart. Um, and once and for all, forget about the opinions of others and find our hearts open. Uh, we, we, are, we are told today that there should be no spiritual gifts. We are told that that age is past. We are told that there are no apostles today. Um, because the age of the apostles is, is past. I believe this is all a ploy of the powers of darkness to confuse us, to put doubt in our hearts. And I pray now that as we begin this exercise this afternoon, that we will follow it through. It's, we, we have time. We have time on our hands. We can do this now. And so um, I, I really pray that we set our hearts with prayer to say, Lord, please, open your word to my heart. So I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to do that. And Father, as we come to you now, in Jesus' name, yes, it is through technology, but I pray, Lord, that you would pour out the Spirit upon us, anoint your word, open our hearts, show us the truth, Lord, because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth, and he will teach us all things. And so, Lord, we commit ourselves to you now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, to begin the exercise, I'd like us to go to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, where we see a very clear uh, teaching about the Holy Ghost being given by the Lord Jesus himself. And I'd like us to read these. Let's not rush them. Uh, let's make sure we get them into our hearts, the script, these scriptures, and then ask certain questions of ourselves and as the Holy Ghost will now expound these things uh, for us. <clears throat> Chapter 1, verse 1, and I want you to have your Bibles with you, not just listen to me reading the scriptures. 
The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began, both to do and to teach. And you'll remember that that statement is actually a reference to the, the public ministry of the Lord Jesus after having come back from the wilderness, being tempted by the devil, which prior to that he had been filled, or the Holy Ghost had come upon him. And he makes mention of that um, particular event when he comes back into the synagogue after using the word to withstand the devil. And he made that famous statement of the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me um, to heal or to preach the gospel and to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. And from that moment, the Lord Jesus went out and everything he did and said was confirmed and demonstrated in the power and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> so here's the account now when we read again in verse 2, he says, Until the day in which he was taken up, that means ascended into heaven, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, folk, the Lord Jesus didn't rest on his own power, if I can put it that way, of the flesh. But everything the Lord Jesus did was through and by the Holy Ghost. And on this occasion, he gives commandments. So even the Lord even his preaching was through the Holy Ghost. And I'm convinced that we can do nothing uh, of ourselves except through the Holy Ghost. And when we, even when we preach, it can't just be the ability to preach. It has to be through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's read on. Um, and he gives commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Now remember that this was the beginning of the New Testament church. There were no teachers, there were no prophets, there were no evangelists, there were no elders, there were just apostles. Why would that be? Obviously because God had chosen the apostles to now lay the foundation into the hearts of those who would believe. And that foundation would be Jesus Christ himself. And so he shows in verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, that is his death, burial and resurrection, by many infallible proofs, uh, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. When one reads the scriptures, you first get the impression that the Lord Jesus appeared and disappeared randomly amongst his disciples. But here's a statement of something with a, with a bit of a difference in the sense of its emphasis. It says that he saw his disciples for 40 days. He was with his disciples for 40 days. And it, it wasn't uh, for any other purpose than to... Uh, speak to them concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, we understand that Paul is also an apostle, and there were other brethren also apostles, but that was after the Lord Jesus had ascended into heaven. Here, the Lord Jesus is on earth. He has risen from the dead. For 40 days, he is speaking to his apostles, and what he was speaking about was about the kingdom of God. And being assembled, in verse 4, together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And I want to put emphasis on that, because we talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but very seldom we, we talk about the fact and the truth that the Holy Ghost was a promise 
given by the Father. Um, and I cannot for one second begin to believe that a promise given by the Father, which was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, no longer applies because it's a different dispensation. It's just not true. Because what we find going on from there through the entirety of the book of Acts, we see evidence of the working and of the power of the Holy Ghost, not just upon the apostles, but upon normal people, men, women, old men, young men, old women, yet young women, even children, even uh, servant uh, servants, as was prophesied by the prophet Joel. There's no qualification. All those that believe are, are able to receive the promise of the Father. So just put that in your heart for a moment. And he says to them, you must wait for the promise. He didn't say, wait until you speak in tongues. He didn't say, wait until the Holy Ghost came upon you. He said, wait for the promise of the Father, which can only mean that they were waiting for the fulfillment of, of this promise. What was this promise? And was it ever displayed? Was it ever given at any other point in the history of mankind? I don't see in the word that in, in the Old Testament anywhere, we see the Spirit coming upon men. We see the Spirit moving upon men. But nowhere do we read of the promise of the Father. I believe that will become clear during this particular Bible study. And he said, which he said, you have heard of me. He's reminding them that he's actually already told them, introduced them to the promise of the Father. And he said, he makes the statement now in verse 5. For John truly baptized with water. Now what's he referring to? He knew John baptized with water. And in fact, he was baptized by John. And he says, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So what he's saying is the promise of the Father is actually the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He says, and when they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, won't you show us at this time or restore again the kingdom to us? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons. Isn't it amazing? We always want to know stuff that does, doesn't even concern us as to where we are now. So no difference here. And he says, And that which the Father hath put in his own power. But, verse 8, You shall receive. Not, he didn't say you will receive salvation. He didn't say you will receive regeneration. He did not say you will receive the new birth. He did not say, he did not say you would receive righteousness. He said you will receive power. Now, <laughs> there's no plainer word, unless of course you don't believe that this applies today. But you, we'll see as we're going along that this promise, it says, and that was given by Peter when, when in Acts chapter 2, and we'll refer to that just now, but he says, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be not saved, not, not righteous, not a new creature. He says, you shall be B. Uh, and so, go back. The promise of the Father, which he had already told them of, and we'll deal with that in our next session, that promise would be fulfilled by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost would endure or give or cause us to receive power. Now, do I receive this when I'm saved or do I receive it when I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost? Well, you can now start making up your own mind. It says, and you will be witnesses. You shall be 
witnesses unto me. Witnesses unto me. Now, what are these witnesses? Because remember now, just before this event, you can go to the end of all the Gospels, and there's a great commission given. And the commission, spoken slightly differently in each Gospel, right at the end, was go into all the world, preach the Gospel, and these signs will follow those who believe. In other words, God is not presenting a dead word. He's presenting a gospel that is confirmed and bears evidence through signs and wonders of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, you and I are a part of this uh, dispensation and just sharing it with you. And I'm not used to speaking over telephones and all this technology. I can't see your faces, although I long to see your faces. But the fact of the matter is I pray God put this hope of this promise in our hearts. And he says, you'll be witnesses unto me. In other words, you will represent who I am. You will represent my resurrection. You will represent this life-giving Savior, the Lord Jesus. And does the word not say that the ministry of reconciliation is Christ in us reconciling the world. How? But in demonstration of the spirit and power. I want this power. I long to, to know the fullness of this power. So God bless you. This is our first session. But we will continue randomly. Not randomly. Randomly taking opportunity of time. But continuing in this series. But any questions that may come into your heart, anything you want to say, please, won't you send us those questions so that we can answer them and allow the Lord to answer them so that all of us can be brought on this wonderful journey into the baptism of the Holy Ghost and be persuaded that it is the truth. So God bless you.